y'all it's Amanda welcome back to my channel and today we're going to talk about the books I read during the second half of July All right, y'all. So we're going to dive right into this. A lot of these books I've chatted about throughout the month in vlogs and stuff. All of the actual reviews on my blog will be linked down below. The books will be linked down below if you want to purchase them, all that stuff. I do have a, a mid-month wrap-up that I already did earlier this month. I will link it down below as well. <laughs> the circus train. Okay, so this month, if you already know, was really rough with um, DNFs. Okay, how many books I DNF? I lost count at this point. Four, five, six, I don't know. <laughs> and they were all the book of the month books. I was just like, unhaul, unhaul, unhaul. I told y'all I was going to be really strict with them. And I was. <laughs> so, yeah, it led to a whole secular romance discussion. It's the whole thing. Other than that, I did manage to find The Circus Train as a Hidden Gems. Amita Parikh. Can't pronounce stuff but this book was great okay this five stars i was completely immersed from the first chapter it's about lena she's a young girl she's the daughter of a circus illusionist named theo and she's very smart she loves science medicine her father is very overprotective and at first you're not really sure what happened all these things and there's a lot of secrets and things that are hidden she is disabled and unable to walk since she was a young girl because of the polio things take a turn though when they rescue alexander I don't know how you say his name for real. The audiobook had a special way to pronounce it, but I'm saying Alexander. So he was a Jewish orphan and he had many secrets, a lot of stuff going on, hardships with his family. So we start to learn about him. But Alexander and Lena form this beautiful friendship and a little bit of a budding romance, and it's precious. And we're we're following these 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 characters' journeys from the 1930s to the mid-50s. I love that. That whole span of time was great. It's really seeing them grow and everything they had went through, it meant so much at the end. This is a secular historical fiction, but it's clean and it has a circus twist. So I love that because they're on this circus train. He's an illusionist. No real magic, but it's just that circus type stuff, right? You don't see a ton of circus stuff as you do see quite a bit of the World War II stuff popping in. But of course, we're in, like I said, 30s right the 30s and 40s here love the elements we did have of the circus it was awesome five stars really strong female lead she perseveres through a lot disability representation strong family elements it's just a great story and i highly recommend next book i read was an american in scotland by lucy connelly connelly i'm not gonna i think it's connelly because it kind of connect kind of i don't know <laughs> This was a really nice Scottish cozy mystery. This is definitely an Amanda book. Thank you to Tammy over at the Protagonist Pub for this recommendation. Look at me picking up ranks immediately. Girl, what? I got the audio on this and the audio was really great. The main character is Dr. Amelia McRoy and she is an American who is just ready for a change and she ends up moving to Sea Isle in Scotland and she's the new doctor there. And crazy stuff starts happening because she's used to this busy emergency room stuff back in Seattle. She's hoping it's going to slow down but they didn't know because as soon as she gets there somebody did and so she is the new doctor having to help out with all this stuff in the case constable there they kind of butt heads but a little bit of a romance starts to happen hey we'd love to see it um this has just a really great immersive scottish setting i love the side characters abigail and tommy were wonderful their brother and sister and tommy he is on the spectrum so i really like to see that represented because he works really well in the garden and helps his sister and all that stuff and i think he was nonverbal for the most part so yeah, I just, I really love to see him being able to do all these things he was doing. And he was a very, like, mild side character, but still really love to see his character when he was there. It's mostly clean. I want to say there was a few bits of language, mild language, though. And there was a couple scenes I was like, mm, whatever with this. <laughs> but a couple mentions of things I wasn't crazy about. I still really enjoyed this one. It was a really good start to see. And we have Pixels in Paint by Christiane Hunter. This is a Christian contemporary rom-com okay i love this so much i already talked about it quite a bit this is a stem romance clean faith elements enemies to lovers and i say enemies to lovers is very light they have this more of it's more of like a banter so if you don't like enemies to lovers you still probably like this because it's not like a true enemies to lovers it's just like the vibe of it personally to me so take that for what you will but other people were calling it enemies to lovers i feel like it's like very light you know like they have more banter than anything so we'll just say that you know they kind of butt heads okay it really combines the world of art technology just so well we have this personal growth of our characters i really related to our main character of emma she was very relaxed she's a people pleaser hello that's me uh she has this love for video games and all these different other personal interests she's really trying to please her family and her mother her sister all this stuff and she almost has like this secondary life that they don't really know what she's really like anymore and so she's just finding her own and she really started to like 
learn to be herself in this book and I love that. The book starts off with Carter Anderson. He's our artist. He is struggling to do any kind of paintings over the last two years until he sees Emma and he sees Emma's at this art show with her family and she's not thrilled to be there. She's trying to find an exit, honey. And so she sees him. They run into each other and he kind of helps her out a little bit. Uh, he's fascinated with her though. You know, he, she, her muse is like, we'll call it. She's the muse for him. Okay. Is that what they call it? I don't know. But... <laughs> He pretty much sees her as the inspiration, okay? And he starts painting again, sketching stuff out, all this stuff. And so they kind of connect, and she really feels like an answer to his prayer. That's really, that's I think that's a direct thing from there. He, he thinks that, and I love seeing that he felt that way about her. It's a project that him and her end up working on, really getting to know each other. And, you know, of course, there is some conflict at the end, but I was okay with it. And, you know, she just really wants her family to be proud of the work she does. If I said, she's a programmer. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I said that, but... Yeah, my bad. She is a programmer and she is not into all this. Okay, she doesn't have any art appreciation. He's wanting to help her with the art appreciation and to have her understand it more. And it's just, it's funny. Some of the stuff she says about the art made me laugh. There's just some really good laugh out loud moments in this. And I think if you like good, clean rom coms, you will love this. Did I say rom coms? <laughs> My bad. I meant to say rom com. Okay, let's get going. I don't know if I'm in any order, honestly, if it's the next book. I've just kind of got printouts here. My bad. But anyway, the next book we're going to talk about is A Bound Heart by Laura France. Y'all, Laura France is a new favorite author for me. I absolutely love this book. If you're looking for a book that gives you all the Outlander vibes, but is clean and Christian, this is it. I mean, say less. This is it. This is a Friends to Lovers. We have a noble Scottish hero. This is set in the 1700s in Scotland and Colonial Virginia. We see some stuff going on here about Culloden, the Culloden War back in the 1700s, and the early American Re Revolution, all this stuff. Uh, I give this four and a half stars. So close to five star. It is one of my favorite books of the month, regardless of the rating. Like, what is rating sometimes? I truly love this. Highly recommend it either way, okay? Between the four and the five, it is what it is. Fours and fives, I usually recommend to people. Okay. Laura France always knows how to transport you to Scotland, y'all. She has these richly detailed settings, complex characters. The uh, main characters in this are Magnus and Lark. And they grew up on the same castle grounds together. But Magnus ends up married to this other woman, okay? There's some stuff going on with that. I ain't gonna say, but we're here. Life has lost many babies. I think it was six babies she's lost. They've been trying to have children. It's not worked out. So Lark is there to help her with fertility treatments and all these different herbs and things that they would have done back in the 1700s. And she is their um, guest castle beekeeper, we'll say. And so, unfortunately, Magnus's wife passes away and it's crazy what happens i ain't gonna say but the circumstances surrounding the death of course lark gets blamed and yeah we see um lark and magnus on their way to virginia colonial virginia to be indentured servants okay and the rest goes on from here so the, it's just crazy the stuff that goes down what there are some times that they were separated so i would have liked to see a little bit more of them together and i really wish we had a little bit of an epilogue that's why it was four and a half stars and there was some love triangle bits i didn't love in here and even though those parts were not my favorite they did make for a very emotional ending right so yeah i still really enjoyed this cannot wait to read more of laura's books in the future they are definitely on my list a heart adrift is next on the list y'all we're gonna talk about hello stranger by katherine center now i love this i give it four stars it was just a, such a unique story. There's witty banter. It's very binge worthy. Read it in like a day or so, I think. There was some family drama. Very unique disability representation of something I didn't know about before, before I read this. And a lot of laugh out loud moments. So the second one I'd read by her. And this one deals with something called, what was it called? Prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia. Okay, you really say that. But it is basically facial blindness. So this whole story starts off with our main girl, Sadie, having a seizure in the grocery parking lot. And she wakes up and realizes something has happened. She has to have brain surgery. She has the brain surgery. And, and the after effects of this brain surgery are this facial blindness. And it's like they can't see your face. They can see your body, your clothing, and all that stuff. But the face is just like jumbled up, you know? They might see parts of your face, but... I don't know if it's almost like a Picasso type thing. I really don't even know how to explain it, but she could not identify the person with this. And she's going through a lot of hard things here. You know, her mother had passed away and she was supposed to compete in this competition that her mother was supposed to before she died and never got that chance. So this was a competition that was going to be really important to her because she's a facial portrait 
artist and then she has facial blindness the whole she's just doesn't know what to do with her life at this point and she's struggling financially and all this stuff okay uh in comes two different guys in her <laughs> <laughs> relationship we'll say and it was very interesting the way she did this romance I really really liked it it was fun to kind of see I kind of picked up on what she was doing but um yeah I really liked what she was doing we have this guy Joe and then we have what was his other, other guy's name I don't remember the other guy's name but <laughs> he was a veterinarian okay I can't remember his name for nothing okay let's go on uh but yeah she kind of has this stuff going back and forth with them two guys and you know she's getting to know one in particular more than the other and uh there it's just really sweet and funny and I was cracking up there are some cuss words in this you know I think there was like four or five I want to say five f words and some of the maybe 10 to 15 s words overlook the language because it was just such a great story but I want to mention that for those that uh, want to know about the language of course uh, anyway so yeah we don't know if her condition is going to improve at all but she just continues to go through these therapies and things with her doctors and trying to just make the best of her situation but you know she's got this evil stepsister Parker look your girl we was about to throw hands okay Parker <laughs> I'm just kidding but only a little bit okay I'm just saying like Parker was just oh my gosh insufferable I was like girl go on <laughs> but you know you always gotta have those characters in a book right she truly just pretty much ruined Sadie's life in high school and was just always out to get her kind of some rough patches with her stepmother but overall really the stepsister is the evil one okay so uh but yeah we see a lot of stuff going on with that and really we just see how Sadie is just coping and it's more of a character story than anything I mean the romance is there but I would say it's like half romance half her story right just to see how she's gonna cope with this is she still gonna be able to compete in the competition yeah check it out if you can handle some of the curse words check it out okay all right the next book I want to talk about is The Love Script by Tony Shallow I love this book give it five stars love Tony Shallow's books so much there's such great faith content in this we have a hairstylist named Nevaeh. Loved her name. It's heaven spelled backwards. I love it. It's beautiful. Beautiful name. We have Lamont Booker. He is just the the sexiest man alive, we'll say, <laughs> in this book. They call him the SMA. Okay. <laughs> so funny and he is a new Christian up for the last five years he's been a new Christian and he doesn't want anyone in Hollywood to feel like not see him as a true Christian well Nevaeh is his mother's hairstylist and they haven't really talked much or anything but uh, I think she's been doing it maybe a year or so and they hadn't really talked well she's walking out on the front porch one day and she trips he grabs her paparazzi snaps the photo uh-oh odd positions here what are we doing uh and then everybody starts picking it apart and saying is he really a christian and judging him for what that looks like happening okay in public and the story goes on from here we see that the publicists say hey you really y'all need to be fake dating because you may be losing some deals lamont what's going on poor nevaeh is she going through it you know she's a hairstylist who has her own job outside of being his mother's hairstylist and paparazzi is flooding her left and right yeah they do agree to quote fake date but they don't want to really lie so they say hey let's try to date and see how it goes for real and i love that about this okay it was almost like you know not a true fake dating thing like a lot of times fake dating is like okay we're not really gonna date we're truly fake with this no feelings but in this he was like well let's not really lie to each other let's try this and they did tell some little lies here at the beginning to the paparazzi but overall it was a little bit different than your typical fake dating story because it's christian and they didn't want to lie and they really want to try it out and see how it works so i like that about the story the faith content was amazing I love reading this because it's just even if some parts are not as realistic as what it could be in real life i still love this portrayal of this hollywood actor what we wish we would see in hollywood right uh because you don't see a lot of this christian uh, popular actors that everybody knows in public right uh but i would love to see that you know you might see it but like it's not like you know like brad pitt and all these other actors who are secular uh, movie stars it wouldn't necessarily probably be like that and he didn't get as much criticism as you would probably think but I just love the story, even if it's not as realistic as it might have been in a real Hollywood situation. I love the portrayal of this. We need more of this. Um, I just, I love the, the feelings I felt while reading this. It was love seeing how strong that he was in his faith. You don't see that in the male lead. We have some discussions about church, going to church. I love to see that. His friends, Chris and Tuck, were awesome. Just a really good time. I've talked a lot about this already on my channel, but yeah, I highly recommend this. Tony Shiloh always has really great Christian content in her stories that just makes me happy. And that's why it's five stars. Right, now we got Nancy Mail. What? 
What? Did a new favor suspense? What? Amanda, what are you doing? Okay, <laughs> I'm not a normally, I'm not normally just a general suspense person, but this was amazing, y'all. I'm gonna tell you right now. The ex FBI characters opening their own practice. It has some really nice faith content. It's very binge worthy. I read it in like one day. Okay, uh, who am I? There are the villain slash killer, I will say, point of views. There's a lot of discussions surrounding mental illness. I'll tell you, we'll go more in depth here in a minute. And there was a little bit of a romance hinted. It's very light. I'm hopeful that there will be in book two. I need a romance for these people, okay? So, yeah, very fast paced, nice faith elements, all that stuff. So, this is a Christian suspense. Not romantic suspense, just general suspense. But I'm hopeful there's a romance. So we're following River Ryland and Tony St. Clair. And they end up, they're ex-FBI people. And they end up opening their own practice. And the first bit of this is like we're seeing some really fast paced stuff going on of like a previous case when they were, I think when they were FBI people and they like, she was in a container locked away from a serial killer. It was very like, what's happening? And she's crying out to God to save her. She is saved and Tony got shot. It was like a whole thing in the first part. Okay. So that, if that ain't enough to reel you in, let me just say it is. <laughs> it sure did. I'm just saying, let me tell you, because I was like, what? Okay, let's go. So then we cut to, time after this and they have their own practice and they get a case where this mom is like hey my son's been missing for four years help me find him he's like a teenager at the time and I think he would be 18 today probably um and so they are on this hunt for this kid who has been missing for many years and we get their point of view of all this stuff going on but we're also seeing this other point of view of this guy Brian and I was like Brian what are you doing who is what's Brian who is he is he a killer is he the killer we don't know and that's where the mental health stuff comes in Brian he has schizophrenia and synesthesia synesthesia is like where he sees colors let me formally tell you because the in, in here it says it's a neurological phenomenon in which the stimulation of one sense triggers an instantaneous involuntary experience in another in other words, it causes two more, two or more senses to cross. So they may hear color or taste sound. And so you know from the very beginning that Brian is a killer and we don't know how he's involved in this case, okay? This whole story, you're like, is he even involved in this case or is he just killing people? Like there's multiple POVs and so you're trying to figure out what, how is he involved? Been through a really hard time. His family kicked him out because of his mental illness, put him in a, well, they, I say kicked him out. They put him in a mental institution to help him and they kind of just left him there. And he's just, he hates them for that, you know? And it's, it's sad because his, his mental illnesses are starting to go untreated. He's suffering and unfortunately leads to him killing. And so, yeah, some of those point of views as the killer were a little unsettling for me, y'all. Like, y'all know I, I'm not I'm not good with thrilling. And, <laughs> I'm not good with that stuff. So a little bit of that was unsettling, but it wasn't too much. Add to the depth of the story, right? And I understand why it was added. We really needed to see from his point of view because you almost feel like this empathy and compassion for Brian because of what he's going through mentally and needs his help. But you also don't excuse like what he's doing because everyone is ultimately responsible for their own actions here, right? That's some things that they say in this book. We start to see how he's tied in with everything and it just all makes for this action-packed story that you're like, oh my goodness, I need to know. So as far as content warnings, I would say this is overall clean. But again, some of the killer point of views are a little bit unsettling. There are mentions of the killings, blood, mental illness and that stuff. Also, River's mother has Alzheimer's. And so we see some of the stuff she's going through. So, it, you know, we see some of their own personal struggles, River and Tony, and that really added depth to the story for the characters too. So yeah, I just, I can't recommend this enough. If you like mystery suspense, but you want it to be more on the clean side, have a little faith elements. One of the things I wrote was, and I will bring you through this storm. You are my beloved child and I never left you. Amen, right? Uh, yeah, I gave us five stars, no doubt, right? And Nancy, honey, I gotta read the rest of her stuff. I got like three more of her books on my shelf. So yeah, we need to do that. All right, now. Well, what's next? I feel like I talked too long, y'all. Let's talk about these next three books together. We've got A Foreign Crown, A Torn Allegiant, and Allegiant, <laughs> Allegiance, and A Tenuous, I don't know how you say it, Betrothal, something Betrothal, okay? Jen Goggle Johnson. And this is the Royal Regency series. Y'all, this was the only reason I picked this up because I had book three on NetGalley since 2022. You needed to get that off of there. But it, I didn't know it was book three. So I was like, okay, I got the audio. 
let's go let's give it a go and the first two were okay i gave the first one three and a half stars that's a foreign crown and it was all about this lady arabella yeah she was summoned to be this lady in waiting for the queen and then there's this prince layton he's the youngest of eight sons he's determined to, to prove his worth and he's unwilling to turn a blind eye to napoleon's privateers so that's kind of the time period it's napoleon stuff napoleonic war type stuff um, so Leighton ends up um, embarking on this journey to England and he's trying to petition the British Navy for aid where he ends up meeting Lady Arabella and they have this instant connection and everything goes on from there. Um, yeah, they're kind of torn between being a match made in public because of like their status there. You know, she's working for the queen. It's like, can they really be together kind of stuff? So yeah, I like this one. I gave it three and a half. It was set in 1810 England. You know, it's, it, it shows the actual details of King George, King George the third's madness. So, like, you actually have real royalty here portrayed. That was interesting to me. Uh, you don't see that a lot. So, um, very, I felt like this was, though, more character-driven than plot. So, something was just missing for me here. I never really fully connected with the story or the characters or something. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the audio. That can that can truly impact my experience a lot of times. But it did have kind of like this fairy tale feel. So, yeah, I think if you like Regency romances, you would like these. The second one, I also gave three and a half stars, but I rounded it up. So, on Goodreads, I put the first one down to three. And then the second one, I put up to four. This one was interesting because, like, she has to spy on this guy and he becomes the man she loves. And so that plot was really cool to me. You know, it was, these are just, and these are not Christian. These are just clean Regency romances, by the way. But the second one, A Torn Allegiance, is Lady Elsie. And she's a strong, outspoken woman. And she's asked to spy on Prince Hayes by her father. So little does she know that's going to be like her love interest, okay? Um, feelings start to form during her spying. And the rest goes on from there. And it was really cute. So, yeah. Um, what I really liked about this one was she has like a Scottish heritage. That was cool. The characters are easy to love, very historically rich. I just, I still don't feel like I got into it as much as I wanted to, so. And then the third one, I was like, what is going on with this? Why? Why? It was like a marriage of convenience, but I DNF it 30% because, I don't know if it's 30%. It was chapter 16, maybe it's 50%. I don't know. I was like, I'm not listening no more of this <laughs> because the third one was literally like, marriage and convenience but like they were like oh we're not gonna get married because we want to be able to choose our person and they're just not even really like getting to know each other i was like what is this so anyway oh there are my notes anyway yeah i just put it down i was not here for it the last book i want to talk about is break a day colin coble i already talked about my vlog so yeah five star read the series edge of night dark oh edge of night <laughs> edge of dust dark of night break a day read this series it's an annie peterson trilogy i don't know what else to say great ending for our characters fast paced great romantic suspense i like that kylie played a smaller role her daughter in this because she didn't need to be mixed up with all this mess <laughs> there was so much going on here okay uh wait, i can't say a whole lot because it's book three i don't want to spoil anything there's just a lot of family dynamics in here i like that because we get to kind of really feel connected to our characters um we're seeing more of like who are these people that are like causing people to go missing in the woods all this stuff non-stop action read it that's all i'm gonna say okay because i've talked enough <laughs> i told y'all all about these books reviews are linked down below i feel like i talked a lot about break a day in the last vlog so yeah um i really like that series anyway that's it for me i hope i didn't talk too long we'll see how long this is but it's okay either way i, I can't get the wrap-ups down short enough but it's fine uh, i love y'all i hope y'all enjoyed this video let me know if you read any of these books down below or you want to and i'll see you on my next video bye y'all